Clemson. They have uh, had their way recently in this rivalry. Clemson, they have that win earlier this year, December 2nd. That was down in Clemson. Steve Forbes is actually 0-3. He has never defeated the Clemson Tigers. Opening yes. tap is one, and how about that for a quick bucket, Trevin Galloway. Galloway started off and picking up from where he left off. Had 17 in that victory early this year against Wake. So Wake Forest basically just spotting Clemson a two to begin the ball game. Demon Deacons taking their time. This has been a potent offensive team so far this year. Their first shot is missed, but Johnny on the spot is Andrew Carr. And that's one of the things that Wake will do. Carr is one of those guys that can shoot the three, but he's going to hop around that rim. He's got to do a good job of making sure they keep him off the boards. Ball is last touched by Appleby. It'll stay with the Clemson Tigers. Brian, while we have a moment, tonight's keys to the game brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Eric, they call them keys for a reason, man, when you look at both of these teams. For Clemson, inside out, this is a team to like the three. They want to establish P.J. Hall early. And for Wake, you want to convert the miscues. This is a team that will put pressure on you, try to go points for turnovers. Brevin Galloway misses from deep. He'll fire it up from long range. about him in the open and his ability to be able to knock down the three he is a bucket getter the last thing you want to do is allow him to be able to get off early 43 percent from behind the arc not bad Clemson can't answer shot is missed by Hunter Tyson you, you watch out we come down pass under the screen he's gonna say you know what I'm gonna make you pay for it could have gotten the and one one right now but you can look at his face this is the guy that's got a little swag to his game Eric Second in the ACC, 17.8 points per game. He has been everything Steve Forbes could have dreamed about when he got the transfer to come over from Gainesville. Hildreth misses the turnaround. Shefflin gets it out of the double team. Galloway, nothing there. Beatles a lefty. Fires up a lefty one after and it's true. Nice run by Beetle. Interesting to see how he steps in for Chase Hunter. Hunter out tonight with an ankle injury. Beetle's one of those guys who want to run your offense, but you also want to take the way he gives you. Beetle starting for the first time as a college player. Ryan, you remember your first start? Oh, absolutely. I remember back way in 86. I think I had maybe 12 points, six fours, and a lot of butterflies. <laughs> absolutely. Andrew Carr, a lot of dribbling for him. Shot clock is down to seven. For those of you who have not seen Appleby play, this dude is electrifying again. He gets going. You see he's got the crowd into it already. Got a little bounce to his step right now. How did he ever get out of Gainesville? P.J. Hall quiets the crowd. And this is the guy that for Clemson. You want to establish P.J. Hall coming off of that 26 points. Got a little bit more rhythm. When I talked to Brad Ronell, said he's starting to get his legs underneath him. They're going to look to try to feed him off to the night. Hildreth. Going one-on-one. -on -one. Nice contest by Shefflin. Forces the miss. Good defense by Shefflin. He's one of those guys you can switch it out of the guard because he can move his feet. See the last time stand right in front of Chet. Hill. Hildreth. Galloway called for the offensive foul. Hildreth held his water. This is his last time. Appleby coming off that pick. And again, it give him a little daylight. He's got great lift to that jump shot. You see right now, he is desperately feeling looking over the Clemson fence here. It's going to be a long night, baby. First sub of the game, Dylan Hunter comes in. Freshman guard from Atlanta, the younger brother of Chase Hunter, who will not play. Hunter comes into the ball game. Appleby, a little bit of a heat check three minutes into our game. Beetle runs down the long rebound. Here's Hunter, his first touch. Jump down to Hall, good post position. And if you're Marsh, all you want to do is just challenge. He's seven one. You want P.J. Hall to shoot over you. Contest as many of those shots. Hildreth walled up by Hunter. Offensive reset with Appleby. Hildreth in the corner. Nope, but he's fouled. 
That's a mistake by Josh Beadle. Late on the closeout, it's going to be three free throws for Cameron Hildred. You see this last week. Hill penetration, I be realize defense converts, gets it over to Hildred. You see Beadle. Oh. Dunks into him. Coaches always tell you, challenge, but you don't foul. Now, Brian, you and I were here two and a half hours before the game began. We saw Cameron Hildreth, first person on the floor, shooting free throw after free throw after free throw. That tells me he's in a good rhythm and wants to stay there, or he's not in a good rhythm. He's just went out of it. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Hildreth up until now hadn't scored. And for a guy like that, you want to see the ball go into the basket. Opportunity to get to the free throw line and see him go in. It helps him to get a little bit of a re uh, confidence and a calm down a little bit. First two haven't been perfect, but they've gone down. Another substitution for Clemson. They're going to go with some length. Chauncey Wiggins comes into the game. 6'10 freshman from Grayson Atlanta. Hildreth hits all three. Talking to Steve Forbes earlier, and he said for him, the key is to win the first four minutes of the game. You see right now, Wake off to 11 6 wide, and he breaks that game down, being able to get the first four, last four minutes of the game, and the eight in between. Oh my goodness, Chauncey Wiggins was in the game for all of six seconds. And no hesitation. I mean, touches no it. Hesitation. Well. I like this kid. Grass on the field, let it fly, baby. Wake Forest, the two point lead. Step through. Trying to muscle up there, car can't get it. Second opportunity goes. Chance for an and one. Andrew Carr. How about Wake Forest? Off to a great start. Tyree Appleby from distance. Two shots, a combined 60 feet. Six points for the senior. Get access to the care you need with coverage in all 100 counties. A real fun evening here at the Joel Joel Coliseum, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Wake Forest, they have been picture perfect here in this building. Nine and oh. You can see why with the talent they've got on the floor, like Tyree Appleby with the enthusiasm here in the stands. It's a nice mix. Andrew Carr's at the line trying to finish off a three-point play. Made a layup while getting fouled right before our last break. All right, so Wake Forest is a perfect four for four at the free throw line. They lead by five. R.J. Godfrey's checked into the game. He wears 22. This is Wiggins! He's touched the ball twice for a grand total of a second and a half, and he's got six points. I was going to say the same thing. that he's not hesitating. You know, again, not having Chase Hunter, they're going to find some other scoring. You see Wiggins has come in and is like, hey, pick me, pick me, coach. I am up for it. For those of you who don't know, Chauncey Wiggins had 14 points in 11 games total this year. He's already got six. Lefty off the window, Cameron Hildreth. And again, you talked about Hildreth. He's one of those guys that's 6'4", does not mind playing aggressive, being able to put the ball on the deck and took P.J. Hall, put it right in his chest to finish it at the cup. Hunter, come on. Finally, the defense closes out on Wiggins. Clemson, their secret weapon's not so much of a secret anymore. Godfrey keeps the ball with the Tigers. Tyson's been quiet. Rebounded by a couple of Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Davion Bradford has checked in. He wears number 20 for Wake Forest. Hildreth working the baseline. A lot of dribbling here. Put a lot of effort. But I mean, here's the thing. When you saw Hildreth, it doesn't bother him. That last time, he had Hunter Tyson that has him by a few inches. Basically decided, hey, I'm going to treat you like a mouse in the house. Not afraid to go little on big. Appleby glides to the elbow. And a foul going for the rebound. That's going to be against Clemson as hitting the deck is Bradford. And watch you know, he just, you know, A lot of guys down there, when they see a bigger guy, he's like, you know what? Clear out. I got a mouse on me. Let me go ahead a little up and over. And then, like I say, finish it around the rim. He's one of those guys in the beginning he struggled to get going. Those three free throws. Then he scored his last two buckets. You see him get a, a quick breather. Carr. 
missed everything. Run down by Wiggins. Lamar Monsanto back into the ball game. He wears number 30 for Wake Forest. Loose picked up by Appleby. Appleby zigging and zagging. And that'll be a chance for a three-point play. What a mistake by Godfrey. He interfered with a ball that was never going to go in. And now Appleby, who's an elite free throw shooter, has a chance for a three-point play. And then you see right there, one-on-one, -on -one, you see Appleby come up with the steal. And then Hunter's in dead man land because, again, this is the guy that puts you on the skateboard. And then you see the and one. How about the start by Terry Appleby right now, taking the game into his hands, letting it come to him. But he's showing you, man, that he's off to a hot start tonight. That foul was on Dylan Hunter. That's two. We've told you about the depth issues with Clemson. And Dylan Hunter has to well, just stay in the game, play with two fouls. This is interesting. I'm sorry, that's the first foul on number two. I'm getting my twos and ones confused. <laughs> <laughs> Got to come up with a better system. The first team foul on Wake Forest, and we played almost seven minutes. They call it on Bradford. Wake Forest, 9 0 at home, the Clemson Tigers, 7 0 in league play. And a blocking foul called on Monsanto, on Bradford. That leads free throws for P.J. Hall. We talked about Hall and the fact that they haven't had a chance to really establish Hunter Tyson. You want to go ahead and give them a heavy dose of P.J. Hall again. So P.J. Hall at the line. All you gotta do is keep it 77% at the free throw line for Hall. Couple good looking free throws. And with the two made free throws, Hall will lead. Ben Middlebrooks comes into the ball game. Sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Carr. Backdoor cut. Williamson lost the ball, has to regroup. Dribbling Monsanto, mm. but it works out. Monsanto is one of those guys that normally would knock down that three. Had a chance to play a little one-on-one. -on -one. Little Gypsy do a little fadeaway. Hanging Hunter, no. And Carr claws away the rebound. Wake Forest the lead in the ball, up by eight. Open floor opportunity, go away with the left hand. And that's what Clemson, they thrive with being able to turn you over and then turn that good defense to offense. See Hunter come up with that steal and Galloway be able to get, turn into two points. Williamson, like Monsanto, both transfers from East Tennessee State. They both had history with Steve Forbes. Believe in him. Bradford knocked off his spot. Maybe he got away with an extra step and scored a goal. Good patience by Brad for being able to realize he's got Middlebrook down there. Use the rim to shield him off and to finish at the rim. Wake Forest 9 for 16, shooting the basketball. Missed inside by Middlebrooks. Appleby. Is it going to be a double dribble? It is. He got tangled up. And tried to restart his dribble. Not allowed. Rare mistake for Wake Forest. They've got momentum and an eight-point lead. 11-21 remaining in our first half. It's time now for the Fresh Market Discover the Best. When you look at this Clemson team off to a 7-0 perfect start. Thing is, they've been road warriors too. Four of those games have been on the road, and you see their best start in 70 seats of AC play. Hunter Tyson with nine double doubles. I told you, your boy was—he's flat out been balling. It's not just this year, too. You go back to last year, end of last season. The Clemson Tigers have won 11 straight ACC regular season games, by far and away the longest, best stretch in program history. 
I mean, you look at them tonight, they're playing without Alex Hemingway, one of the better three-point shooters. And you got a P.J. Hall that's trying to find himself and get his rhythm. Just imagine when they get all their parts and pieces and everyone healthy. This team has definitely shown that they're one of the tops in the league by their player already. Wake Forest, they're going to bring back their big Matthew Marsh back into the game. Marsh played the first four minutes of our contest. Didn't attempt to shot or grab a rebound. Now given a second opportunity. Marsh, seven foot one, shooting 89% on the year. That's a significant playing time. Clemson has the basketball. Galloway can't leave him open. Who touched it last? Wake Forest. And here's the thing, Eric, with Hunter Tyson, even though he hasn't scored yet, one of the things that you love about his game is that he's not going to force it. He's going to still give you the other, the other thing. He's going to get the rebounds. He's going to play solid defense. And then what will happen, you'll slowly see him start to warm up to this game. I love the fact he does not press and try to force the issue. Clemson Bates is one of their last seven shots from the field. Wiggins walled off. Galloway. Strong rebound, Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks got it back and had it ripped away by Marsh. So Clemson, a team that averages close to 76 points per ball game in a bit of an offensive funk right now. Wake Forest, on the other hand, they have made six of their last eight shots to run this lead up to eight. Hildreth, that's his foot, I think. No, I guess it went off of Revan Galloway's toe. I saw the same thing huh. that you did. I thought that went off of Hildreth's foot. But maybe that's the reason why I'm sitting up here with you and not down there with him. <laughs> Bobby Clintman has checked in for the first time for Wake Forest. Freshman from Sweden, where he's number 34. Appleby! Man, for a guy who was six feet tall, he can get a long way with one step. I mean, he went down to downtown Winston-Salem on that one, man. The seeds just parted as he went straight to the cup. Ten points. First man in double figures. Oh, what a dime by Galloway to Beetle. The back, back screen got Beetle wide open on that cut. Wake Forest had a lead, remember, folks, in that game in Clemson back in December, only to lose. Clemson had a tremendous second-half rally to pick up the W. That was back on December 2nd. Tyson. Everything but down for Galloway, but an offensive rebound. Wiggins has been nice. Middlebrooks, short with the left hand. And Middlebrooks called for the foul, trying to get back his own miss. It's been a frustrating start for the sophomore. You see P.J. Hall coming back in from Middlebrook. Again, so far, it's been all wake in this first half. So, you know, for, for Clemson, you want to make find a way to be able to get your bigs involved. Still haven't been able to find Hunter Tyson and get him going yet. Clemson's now committed six fouls. The next foul will put Wake Forest into the bonus. Wake Forest only two team fouls, so Clemson is a long way away from the bonus. Loose ball picked up, and shot is missed. Oh, my goodness. Not going to get a better look for Clintman, but it stays with Wake Forest. He can shoot it. Man, Damari Monsanto. Monsanto third in the conference. Almost three three-pointers a game. Shooting a 40% clip. You see Clemson call a timeout. Monsanto, when he shoots it, it just looks like it's going to go in. That's you just a beautiful looking shot. Scout report says you got to put a hand up on him. You can't allow him to have daylight. You see Wake with their biggest lead of the game. So Wake Forest leads 29 to 18. Now a message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get-go. 
Wake Forest fans have not seen a loss all season long. A perfect 9-0 is Steve Forbes' team here in this building. But one last hurdle for Steve Forbes to climb over, and that's beating Clemson 0-3, the only team that Steve Forbes, this is his third year, it's actually saying something. The only team he has not defeated in the ACC is where Orange tonight. And I talked to him early, and he said that he thought that when they played Clemson that first half, pretty much did what they wanted to do. But then that second half, more shot selection, and then not being able to corral the inside play. So there are a, little, a few tweaks that they've made, you can see right now. Gang rebounding, and when Clemson touches the paint, they've got more guys converging on the ball. Beetle, no look pass down on the block. That's Tyson who got bumped. No worries, that's just the third team foul on Wake Forest. Here's that last time when you saw Hunter Tyson get the ball. You saw three guys from Wake right down there on him. And I'm talking with Steve Forbes, he said every time that they're putting the ball down to Hall or to Tyson, they're going to have a wall around them and force them to have to pass that ball out. And you know Long what range shot for Galloway. And the fact of how he shoots it, you know that you keep giving him a chance to shoot it. He does not have a conscience. Got that free license to be able to pull whenever open. Has been 0 for 4 from behind the arc. Galloway now 1 for 5. His 28 three-pointer on the season. Appleby, Clintman, Monsanto. And a mistake by Clemson. They can't clear the rebound. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Clemson Tigers, a perfect seven teams from the ACC, Eric. And that's always good for the league to be able to get that kind of pub for the NCAA tournament, especially in January. Mm. I saw Jim Phillips looking at a box score. He probably noticed that uh, Wake Forest has outscored Clemson eight to nothing, second chance points. And that has a large factor in the fact that Wake Forest leads by eight points. That's the difference. Appleby bumped to the floor. And with Wake Forest in the bonus, that's going to be a one-and-one -one situation for Tyree Appleby. This Wake team has come out and it seemed like they punched Clemson in the mouth. And Clemson trying to find their footing. Again, can't really get any rhythm on the offensive end. And so far, Wake is able to get what they want to the basket. You see right now, already in the bonus. Appleby missed the free throw earlier. He's not going to miss another this half. Okay, one shot. is going to get back in this game. You got to find a way to establish T.J. Hall to get Hunter Tyson rolling. Carr resets. Transfer from Delaware. Spent two years playing for the Blue Hens. Appleby. He'll grip. Going to have to fire someone. Shot clock down. going to be looked at. It's going to be looked at. Clemson's got to do a better job of being able to box out. You want to keep giving away those extra opportunities. First blush, I thought this was after the shot clock had expired. I'm going to trust your gut and your feel on that. You see that penetration. Let's see. Yeah, I think you're right, Mr. Collins. Oh, uh, yeah. Ball still in the left hand. At least a second and a half. Well, the call on the floor was no basket. That's going to be confirmed. Shot clock violation. And it will be Clemson basketball. But they trail by 10. Clemson last lost back in December 10th. They lost to Loyola of Chicago. One of the hottest teams in the country. But down 10. 
Under seven to play first half. Galloway made a three a moment ago. Gives it up. We're doing a good job of being able to make DJ Hall's touches. It's good play by him again. He couldn't really get him on the post because you see Carr fronting him. That last time going to that mid post to be able to put the ball on the floor in a little mid-range jump shot. Hopefully that get him going. Second field goal for Hall. Carr turns back to the iron. One and done. Rebounded Tyson. Again, going through Hall. Mm. Both sides of the court, Hall hit and turn around. And you saw that last time, Appleby came down a double, but then Hall was able to get through that double team. And again, two back-to-back -back buckets. Interesting to see if that allows him to get on a nice little run. Slow start to the year for P.J. Hall, but he is playing like P.J. Hall. We all have seen for the last couple of years now. Three-pointer up and down, Monsanto again. You see Monsanto again. We talked about his ability to let it fly. Clemson definitely got to make sure read the scouting report make him put the ball on the deck Hall's got the last two buckets for Clemson Galloway Defense is always shocked when he puts it up there. I don't know why <laughs> Tyson trying to get his had been relatively quiet it's a long mid-ranger. And again, you see Tyson having a hard time getting some offense. Find himself wide open with one. Again, guys like that, all they need to do is see the basket and the ball go in the basket. Appleby. <laughs> Little bit off the mark for Clintman. Empty possession. Clemson down by seven. P.J. Hall. Four thirty remaining. Look at Hildreth, mm. and Hildreth is clobbered. A little bit of showtime, and it results in a couple of free throws for Cameron Hildreth. You see both teams trying to find a little bit of offense. You see Hunter Tyson right there finds himself wide open. He's like, you know what? I don't mind if I do. And another end, you see Hildreth. Realize he's got one on one. A little blow by. See you later. Look that contact. Hildreth is a bit player as a freshman. Four points, three rebounds per ball game. He's up to uh, close to 13 points and six rebounds. And this is sophomore season. Changes for both sides. Back into the ball game for Clemson is Ian Sheplin. Back in for Wake Forest, Davian Williamson. Hey, Starting to get a little bit of a rhythm. All around ball, all ball player for Steve Forbes' team. That was there, almost got that steal. Earlier in the game, had, early in the year, had a triple double. I think that's the first triple double in the league this year, Eric. It's the third in Wake Forest history. First, of course, being Tim Duncan. You mentioned Tim Duncan and anyone, and that's a compliment. Tyson! Oh, good block. Carr took it away from him right at the rim. Hildreth kicks it right into the waiting arms of Galloway, who got knocked to the floor. That's the second time I believe that Hildreth has dribbled the ball off his foot. He's got to slow down a little bit, but you know what you get with him is high octane. How about this block over? Hunter Tyson thinks he's got one, and then Carr comes over and is like, you are denied. Meet you at the rim. Take that back with you. No suit for you tonight. <laughs> Carr listed at 6'10", Tyson 6'8". game is that you know that he is a load underneath the basket. Give him an opportunity to get those feet set and he can knock down that three. 15 three-pointer for the junior. Shooting over 42% from behind the arc. Good shot for him. Appleby. Carr. Three ball. Nice penetration by Appleby. Forced the defense to have to converge. He found Carr wide open over the three ball corner pocket. Dump down. Shefflin is fouled on the entry pass. Carr was holding it. 
Do you see both guys? Do you see P.J. Hall say, you know what, fake it off, knock that down. And you see right now Clemson trying to climb back. Presented by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. And by CPI Security. CPI Home Security that protects what matters most. Pretty nice home court advantage this year for Wake Forest. 9-0 and at home. Demon Deacons 5-2 and in ACC play, but looking up at the Clemson Tigers, who are still perfect 7-0. and How about P.J. Hall? He's got seven of the last nine for Clemson. A couple of turnarounds, one on the right block, one on the left block, and then a straight-on three-pointer. And you see how they've been able to climb back in this game. Again, being able to establish him, and he couldn't really get anything going, but he got a couple of buckets to knock down that three. Especially if they sit back and keep feeding him. Final 3-10 of our first half. Sheplin. Strong take. Comes up empty. Rebounded Carr. Solid defense by Andrew Carr being able to stay solid. Shefflin has him by maybe by 10 pounds. You realize that good solid defense by Carr. Marsh back into the game. The man the pivot setting a couple of screens. Appleby is bumped off his mark. And because of the one and one, it's going to be well, the bonus will have a one and one for Appleby. Appleby's a hard guy to guard because you've got to respect the fact that he can shoot the three. Real crafty with the ball, especially if you put him in pick and roll action. That last time, Hunter got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. That's the third personal foul on the freshman, Dylan Hunter. His older brother, Chase Hunter, out with an ankle. One and one for Appleby. Make sure you stay tuned for tonight's Ford Fast Break. That's coming up. Tyree Appleby, we told you he started at Cleveland State in the Horizon League, spent two years in the SEC at Florida. He originally is from Jacksonville, Arkansas, just outside of Little Rock. And as good a player as Tyree Appleby is, he's got a long way to go. If he ever wants to be the best shooter born in Jacksonville, Arkansas, that is the place of birth of one Glenn Wright. Oh, Glenn Wright. wow. How could I not, man? Yeah, you know what? You dropping jewels tonight, baby. I did not know about that one. Folks, uh, open up the uh, history books. Michigan Wolverines, all everything. Glenn Rice. He could stroke. It. Score the goal and a foul. P.J. Hall come alive. And you, if you pay, you pay attention to how P.J. Hall, how low he was able to get Mars on that backside. Watch how he gets this post, and what he does immediately goes and doesn't allow them to come with a double team. Marsh tries to stay solid. We talked about the fact that he is a, a low down there because he's so physical, and he jumps into your body. Well, on pajama night here at the Joel Coliseum, who would have guessed that P.J. Hall would have a huge game? <laughs> that is now 14 points for P.J. Hall. Pardon the phone. <laughs> Final 220 here in our first half. Wake Forest has been playing from in head the entire ball game. Woo, pretty shot. Damian Williams hit a three. Good shot by Williamson. You know how he got there because Appleby had his man on a no-man zone. Everyone was focused on the penetration. Realized getting it right over to Williamson, knocking down that three. Hall feeling it. Rebound run down by Carr. Ten-point lead. Remember, Steve Forbes knows his team can't get too comfortable. They led at the half against Clemson back in December and had it all disappear. The December 2nd game, Wake Forest led 33-26 after 20 minutes. Offensive rebound, Williamson! Oh, the six-footer almost had the play of the night. And a foul committed by Marsh somehow after getting bopped in the nose. And you see Marsh go up. Oh, oh my goodness. He got the bad hit in the play on Marsh, that one. He Marsh took just, the elbow. Marsh fouled Tyson with his nose. They showed the replay here. Oh my here. goodness. Yeah. <laughs> And roll the music. That's a tough foul. That's a tough If one. you're Matthew Marsh. That is a tough foul if you are Matthew Marsh. 
I think one of the officials may have caught the replay on that one, partner. Yeah, they can review it. They can review it. Matthew Marsh is from Cornwall, England, so anytime he's involved in anything, it's an international incident. So they're going to review it just to make sure that everything's on the up and up. I think one of the officials was able to see that that replay, and you watch the play. Shot goes up by wins, and then oh. there's a tussle down there. And, and then, I, I'd make the argument that Marsh actually fouled Shefflin with a lefty. That I, that I can see because I thought that he gave Shefflin, but here's that play by Tyson with a quick elbow to the chops. I think the original foul was correct. It should have been on Marsh. And then that incidental contact when Tyson and Marsh collided. So the officials look and deem it a common foul again on Marsh and will come the other way and have a free throw opportunity for Tyson. But rough, rough. Bro, how is that a foul on me? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Even caught the English accent there. Tyson makes a pair. That's what the grad students do, playing in their 125th game. Eight-point game, final 80 seconds of our first half. Hildreth gets a running start. Bounce pass, Carr. He is a tough, physical, down low player. And, and don't let the slight frame fool you because he's super aggressive in the last two games. Averaging 22, and he's a guy that does not shy away from contact. You see it last time, going straight into the chest. And he's found the appropriate level. He is an ACC player through and through. Shefflin, an offensive rebound. Galloway! He can hit it from there. And going for the rebound, a foul called on Clemson. So we'll come all the way to the other end with 48 ticks remaining in our first half. And it'll be Carr shooting two. He now reached the double bonus for Wake Forest. Brian Oliver, you've been associated with college sports since, what, the mid-'80s? Yes, sir. During your halcyon days, playing for Bobby Kremen. Yes, sir. At Georgia Tech. Did you know that Andrew Carr, who started his college experience in Delaware, played for the school that has the only Division I female nickname, the Delaware Blue Hands? The only Division I basketball female nickname. You know, I did know that. You did I, know that. I, but I did because it was familiar. But I could not have brought it out as eloquently as you just did. <laughs> Elena Deladon, either side, has got to be the best to ever come out of Delaware in the basketball, without a doubt. Hey, look at that, the senior Hunter Dyson rings the bell. And you see Steve Forbes is irate with his team, understanding that that's the one guy you cannot leave open. So with only 38 seconds remaining in the first half, Steve Forbes finds it important enough to call a timeout Man, because of the shot. Wide open, and again, Revan Galloway gets it over to Hunter Tyson. Wake has done a good job of being able to keep him quiet, but you know that's the guy that you do not want to allow to get going because they've already established P.J. Hall. And Steve Forbes, 0-3 in his career against the Clemson Tigers. Saw a halftime lead of seven points evaporate back on December 2nd against Clemson. He is super intense right now. You see Brad, Brevin Galloway get the ball up to Hunter Tyson. Watch Steve Forbes. He's like, oh, man, no. Come on, fellas. Yeah, Steve Forbes, a student of ACC basketball. He knows that Hunter Tyson's now played 125 games here in this great conference. He's seen enough to know that, that shot's going down. Absolutely. Then you need to watch. Well, important for Wake right now, you want to take your time and get a solid shot. Probably want to try to run some kind of pick and roll, ball reversal, touch the paint, force them to converge, try to kick it out for maybe an open shot. Difference game clock and shot clock is eight seconds. Here comes Carr to set a screen for Appleby. Monsanto got pushed. Oh, that's a mistake. 
That's a mistake by R.J. Godfrey, the freshman, bumped Monsanto, who is a great free throw shooter. And we'll have double bonus free throws for Monsanto. Well, here's the thing, you gotta honor Monsanto because of his ability to knock down the three. And you see that last time on the penetration. You see that foul right there that allows him to go to the line. Huh. Monsanto was looking at his shoe off in the corner. It's interesting. I don't know if he stepped on a wet spot or what that was, but he was. Still concerned with something going on with the uh, the footwear, but smiling about it. Monsanto with an efficient nine points in the first half. That is a good looking stroke. If you know anything about basketball or take a look at that, then you can tell he can shoot it. All right, this is what it is. Did he slide against someone's beverage? <laughs> I don't know what it was. Stepped on some gum or something. Didn't affect him at the free throw line. Made him both. Final moments of our first half. Tyson. Uh, shot is off the mark. And that will do it for our first 20 minutes here in Winston-Salem. So far, so good for the home team. Wake Forest up 10. Remember, they were up by 7 back in December in Clemson when Clemson came back to steal one away from Wake Forest. 36-30 Central. Notre Dame, Clemson, and women's hoops. Thursday on Bally Sports Southeast. Starting our second half. Wake Forest trying to hand Clemson their first conference loss. Wake Forest does have history on their side. The last two times that Wake Forest has taken on a team 7 0 or better at the time of their game, wow. they've won both times. And the second half begins with a one hander made by Tyree Appleby. And you see the ISO. He was able to get beat on one on one. With a nice little scoop shot. This first half, Wake doing a great job. 50% field goal shooting. We see a turnover. Hildreth comes up with a loose ball. Hildreth, very patient, has Galloway on his back. Back out to Appleby. Remember Clemson playing without Chase Hunter, playing without Alex Hemingway. Score the goal and a foul. What a time by Appleby on that back cut to Carr. Way coming out. Good start early. You see Appleby there. You see great back cut by Carr and the dime by Appleby. Again, being able to absorb that contact. You see PJ Hall a little late on the rotation. Carr had 11 points in the first half with nine rebounds. Almost a double double in the first half alone. And, and here's the thing when I was talking to Steve Forbes, he talked about the fact that playing four minute segments. He said the first four of the game, the last four, the first four of the second half is critical for them. Yet another turnover. That's how Wake is able to speed you up because they want to get the turns and those points off of turnovers. Crazy shot taken by Monsanto. He was clearly feeling momentum was on his side. Tried to capitalize. Galloway bumped off his course. And which Demon Deacon's going to get called for the foul? You got your choices. It's going to be on Hildreth. And here's the thing, Eric. If you're Clemson, you do not want to let Wake speed you up because that's their tempo. They want to speed you up, get turnovers. Settle down, get the ball, run your offense. Give P.J. Hall some touches. Allow Hunter Tyson to get going. And take your time with your offense. Galloway, the 25-year-old, misses inside. Rebounded by Hall. Just the strongest man on the floor right now. And you can see he's just bullying them out there because, again, crashing the boards, being able to come up with those second-chance opportunities. Much needed. That 15-point lead for Wake Forest was their largest of the night. Hildreth. And a foul going for the rebound. It's not a good night for Matthew Marsh. Matthew Marsh continues to just be confused right now. Going after the ball, getting called for the foul, got hit in the face, got called for a foul. <laughs> Hasn't attempted a shot. He's played 13 minutes, one rebound, and now three fouls. Josh Beadle had his pocket picked, lost it, Appleby. Oh! That's how they do it. 
in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And Clemson a little bit rattled right now. First dunk of the game for either side, and it comes by a six-footer. Beetle, two feet in the paint, score the goal. Nice shot by Beetle. You saw P.J. Hall trying to calm his team down and make sure that they don't get too caught up. That was a nice little silencer by Beetle being able to get into the lane. Wake Forest 9-0 at home. Clemson 7-0 in ACC play. And a foul called on Beetle trying to stay in front of Appleby. Eric, now what we talked in the pregame, man, we talked about with Ty uh, Tyree Appleby. Well, steal your cookies. Now, I knew that one, but I didn't know he was going to go ahead and flush oh, it on him like that. Goodness. Oh, my God. Look at him. I didn't realize he had bunnies like that. After that, you look at the bench. <laughs> Meg was like, go ahead and put it on him. Wake Forest leads by 13. Appleby. Hall. Pass stolen away. Monsanto. One man to beat. And he beats him. And again, this is what Wake wants to do. You see that last time on P.J. Hall. They sent a double, forced him to have to come off of that. Monsanto doing a good job of being able to read the passing lane. And that's what they do is they turn you over and there's still points off of turnovers. See Demon Deacons already up to 15. Galloway calling for the ball. Shefflin, a quick spin. Nice move by Shefflin. Realized that he had Hildreth on his back. Didn't wait for the, the double team. Opted to spin quickly before somebody could come and double. First field goal for Shefflin. 12 minutes of court time. Marsh sets the screen. Appleby just flat out lost it. The defense, they forced that baseline. Didn't allow Appleby to come off that pick and roll and touch the paint. Galloway. That'll be a goal 10. Carr couldn't stop himself. Score the goal for Brevin Galloway. Galloway. And then again, Steve Forbes is upset with Monsanto realizing that last time turned his back and he didn't see the, the ball. Yeah, it was close. It's close. Yeah, I think that uh, Steve Forbes had a beef. Hildreth, Appleby, Monsanto, Carr, and Marsh. Four minutes into our second half. Appleby. Here comes Tyson. Numbers now for Clemson. Galloway, Shefflin. Good pressure by Marsh. Hildreth is fouled in the open court by Beetle. And with that, we've got a timeout on the floor. You see both teams go on Monsanto say, I might be able to shoot the three. I can steal it at any point brought to you by a Coyote Tractor. Talk about points off of turnovers. And you see for Wake being able to come back and turn their good defense into offense. We talked about the fact that they will be able to get in those passing lanes. And when they go there, we see plays like this going down to the middle. And again, the little fella being able to go up top. And again, forcing you into those turnovers. This is how they thrive. Monsanto being able to be the recipient to be able to finish. Wake being able to open up this lead by 11. And that is your Coyote tractor turning, turning point. Clemson, see those numbers shooting nowhere close to what they normally do from behind the arc. And Wake Forest converting on those miscues. Wow. It's been an issue. And now fouls becoming an issue for Clemson. They call that foul on Brevin Galloway. But, Brian, the bigger issue is the point guard situation for Clemson. Josh Beadle just a moment ago picked up his fourth personal foul. Dylan Hunter is already throttled with three personal fouls. And this is where you miss Chase Hunter because, again, when a guy like Tyria Appleby, he puts so much pressure on your defense, not so much but just the scoring, his ability to break down the defense and get into the lane. Bradford got it out. Appleby late. So who's going to run the point right now for Clemson? 
They are very thin right now at the lead guard spot. Ben Middlebrooks is in for the first time this second half. And the senior, the grad transfer, Brevin Galloway, calms things down. And again, his ability to knock down that three, again, not shy. I feel like that they need another guy, especially with P.J. Hall on the bench. You gotta be able to get them going, but you gotta be able to get stops because it seems like Wake is really good at being able to do what they want off of. 7-0 run for Clemson, and it stops. Three-pointer, Damari Monsanto. Great ball movement, getting around the horn, Monsanto wide open in the corner. Again, you know, scout report tells you, you got to put a hand up on him and make sure you make him put it on the deck. That is Chase Hunter, didn't dress. He has got an ankle issue. His brother Dylan's got three fouls. The other point guard, Josh beatle has got four fouls. And a turnover called on Clemson. Solid defense by Cam Heldreth. You see that last time. Reverend Galloway going to the baseline and then extending that arm. Anytime you extend that chicken wing, they're going to call it the other way. Watch Third the foul is committed by Galloway. It scored as a turnover. That, that oh, yeah. Right there, a little chicken wing. He's 25 years old. Thought he could get away with it. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. Appleby. Monsanto feeling it. Looking for a crease. He's got Shefflin in front of him. Great defense by Shefflin. Phenomenal defense by Shefflin. Hildreth misses the Hail Mary, but that possession was decided by the defensive. Shefflin leads to the run out. Tyson! Nice time by Galloway. Oh, Tyson being able to get behind the defense. That was a good stop. By Clemson, as much as you see that thinks Wake is going to open up this lead, Clemson still finds a way to be able to get it. Let me number 10. Clemson hasn't lost since December 10th. Hildreth. Didn't oh, even know what it nice. was. Didn't even foot, know what he was. Great footwork by, by Hildreth being able to give him a little up and under and kind of flip it over his head. Hildreth playing with the confidence this year that maybe he didn't have last year. And a blocking foul on Hildreth. See both teams being able to find good plays. Last play you see Hunter Tyson getting behind the defense. Nice dime by Brevin Galloway. And then on the other end, you see the penetration. We're shuffling on a little bit of a oh. skateboard right there. And said, now you see me, now you don't. And finishing at the rim. And then you see that last one. You see Hildreth not being able to get right there. Last time was able to draw the offensive foul. They call for that block. After that play. opportunity for a three-point play. Those are two grad students combining. Galloway to Tyson. And you saw the dime again. Watch this backdoor cut. And you see right there, Hunter Tyson was like, hey, bro, I'm wide open. Another dime by Galloway. And again, we talked about the fact that it seems just when Wake is about to seem like run away with this thing, Clemson comes up with another play. Hunter Tyson with an opportunity to cut this lead now down to eight. You can tell that Tyson's played five years in the ACC. Went up strong with two hands. Knew that there's no chance anyone's going to take it from him. Left some meat on the bone, though. Missed free throw. Keeps it at a nine-point game. Bradford to Appleby. Galloway's got to be careful. He's playing with three fouls. Oh, he's missing. He's missing. Bradford tried to muscle it up. Nothing there. Tyson rebound. Good defense by Shefflin on Bradford being able to come over and just stay solid. Clemson trying to steal some minutes with P.J. Hall not in the game. Galloway, all around good shot. You said that with P.J. Hall coming up, going on the bench, somebody from Clemson needs to step up as of late. It's been Brevin Galloway with points and being able to create offense. Steve Forbes has seen it up. Wake Forest has to call a timeout. Their lead's starting to evaporate. It is a seven-point game. Clemson, they have made their last four field goals to make this a ball game again. Getting those wins on the road. Wake Forest trying to avenge a loss against Clemson. December 2nd at Little John. Carr, face up along the baseline. Working against Godfrey, and Godfrey wins the battle. Good defense by Godfrey, was able to stay solid. That block. 
Dylan Hunter's checked back into the game. Freshman point guard playing with three fouls. Haven't seen Josh Beadle since he picked up his fourth foul. Hunter comes up short. Rebound run down by Carr. He's already got himself a double-double. Third double-double of the season for Carr. First here in the ACC. Transfer from Delaware. Monsanto. Appleby. At one point, Wake Forest led by 15. They now lead by 7. Forest has done a much better job of being able to lock down that penetration. Close up that zone. Right now, they need a bucket. Tyson just wouldn't fall. P.J. Hall has checked back into the game for Clemson. And Eric, I think that they've got to find a way to get the ball down to P.J. Hall and see. Carl right now, it looks like he had a wide open three. Opted not to take it. All the lead score for Clemson. He's got 16. Monsanto, a couple hard dribbles, found his spot. That's a guy that's not shy. He doesn't say, you know what, give me the rock, baby. You know what, I'm feeling it. Good penetration again. Monsanto is able to get that mid-range jumper because you got to honor that three-point shot. Aren't too many guys with his kind of stroke from deep who could power dribble and pull up like he just did. Hall is open for a moment. He'll get another try. Missed everything. Good defense played by Bradford. If you're Hall, I think he's got to go early. I think he was anticipating the double team. He's got to be able to go and not wait. And, uh-oh, that's a foul on Hunter. Both point guards for Clemson now with four personal fouls. Wake Forest feeling their oats, leading by nine. Georgia Tech. Then you got Boston College and Notre Dame. That follows at 2 o'clock. Check your local listings. ACC basketball right in the middle of the conference slate. Good basketball all the way across the conference. Glad you're with us with Brian Oliver. I'm Eric Collins. Clemson in an unfamiliar environment right now. They're trailing. They're down by nine with about halfway through our second half. Brad Brownell, now in his 13th year, trying to get his Clemson Tigers a road win. But it's not going to be easy. Look at the foul trouble. Two guys who have mainly run the point today, Josh Beadle, Dylan Hunter, both one foul away from elimination. Revan Galloway's got three fouls. See Terrell Clemson, great. Terrell McIntyre over there. They may need to suit him up and before long get him off the bench. Yeah, the story today, Chase Hunter not available. He would normally be the guy handling the basketball quite a bit. Averages over four assists a game, but he's got an ankle not available. So no Chase Hunter. Dylan Hunter in foul trouble. Josh Beadle in foul trouble. And oh my goodness, trying to tip dunk and landing on his rump is Davion Bradford. He'll have free throws. You see the penetration by Hildreth right there coming up short. You see Hunter Tyson. Oh, that's pushing. That, play. Was, that was a takedown. Wow. You see that last play. You see right about here. You see Bradford going for that tick. Oh, man. Hunter Tyson, five years in the ACC, thinking he knows how to get away with one, but when you bring a seven footer down to the floor with you. Uh -oh. Bradford, seven for 20 at the free throw line. I was wondering what's going to even out. Came into this game 84% from the field. 84, 21 for 25. But to get something, you got to give something. And clearly, he's given something away at the free throw line. <laughs> Missed opportunity for Wake Forest. It was a great opportunity to try to get the ball into P.J. Hall. Galloway, long two. Look at Appleby, so crafty, trying to draw a foul from behind. Sets up Bradford! And Bradford will have two to atone for the two he missed just a moment ago. You see great penetration by Appleby being able to find Bradford wide open. Again, you see the breakdown. He, he's like wide open. You see late rotation by P.J. Hall, a little frustrated with himself. He couldn't come up with the end one. So Bradford, the transfer from Kansas State. 
still looking for one to fall. This is going to be a common theme for Wake Forest coming out of the stretch, Brian. Clemson has already committed eight fouls, which means Wake Forest will be in the bonus for the remainder of this regulation. And obviously, if you're Wake, you want to put the pressure on with a guy like Appleby. You want to constantly try to penetrate, touch that lane. Hey! Bradford knocks the second one down. Lead is 10. Galloway, Shefflin, Hall, Tyson, and Wiggins playing together. This is Wiggins scoring and a foul. Chance for a four-point play. We called out Wiggins earlier in the game. That guy that came off the bench gave him some offense. You see Hunter Tyson passing over. Wiggins set. Oh. Again, you, you see that foul again. It's one of the things that you do not, if you're Williams, so you do not want to foul a shooter. Give him an opportunity for a four-point play. So Wiggins, who came off the bench early in the first half and nailed his first two three-pointers, now with his free throw, an opportunity to have ten points off the pine. There it is. He came into this game with 14 total points in 11 games this season. He's got 10 this evening. I'm going to tell you the next time he touches, if he's wide open, it's flying. It's going. Better be. Four-point play makes it a six-point game. A little bit nervy here at the Joel. Hildreth finds Carr. Uh-oh. We play on. And Carr takes advantage. Nice play by Carr, realizing the refs had allowed him to play on. Being able to initiate that contact. Good move and finish at the rim. Wiggins, no. Shefflin really fights on that glass. Numbers for Wake. Can they find the mismatch? Clemson dodged the bullet that last time. Reedison wide open. That goes off the shoe of Hall. Look at the great hustle. But what he's going to do is he gives Wake Forest a run out opportunity. Numbers advantage. Williamson. Nice. He hits it. Two for a dollar. That last time he was like, you know what? Find me, partner. I'm not going to let you down. The play was set up by Appleby being able to touch the paint. Forced the defense to have to help him. Gets it over to Williamson. One of the few times that hustling actually hurts you. P.J. Hall hustled to save the ball, and it led to a fast break for Wake Forest. Galloway. And a blocking foul. It's called on Appleby. Man, things are getting hectic. Getting kind of hectic. 7.59 remaining in our ball game. 11-point lead for Wake Forest. Wake Forest leading Clemson by a score of 70 to 59. The locals sure know it. Wake Forest is a perfect 9 and 0 at home. Uh, but if you don't know it nationally, folks, Wake Forest is for real. 13 and 5 overall, five wins in seven conference games. Brian Oliver, they've won three of their last uh, three straight and five of their last six. Well, you see how they're able to do it. This is a team again that will turn you over and try to get points off of turnovers. They've got guys that basically can score inside and out. Tonight, you're looking at they've already got four guys in double figures. You love how gritty they've been playing. They've been able to shut down Clemson and not allow them to be able to be as dominant inside. They've shut down Hunter Tyson and made it really hard for them to be happy to have any rhythm. The officials are looking and a play just before that last timeout uh, involving 21 in orange, Chauncey Wiggins. You see right there as Appleby was going by. Not really sure what we're looking at there. Well, the officials have all moved away from the monitor and we play on. All right, Brian Oliver, going to put your feet to the fire. Clemson 7-0 in conference play. They have won their last 11 straight ACC regular season games dating back to last year. 
if they've got any chance at all, what do they have to do in the final 759? I still feel like they've had a chance to get the ball back into P.J. Hall. When, when they were able in the first half to get going, they were given a heavy dose of giving him the ball inside. That'll free up some things for him. Hunter Tyson's been pretty much on lockdown with Cam Hildreth. They've got to be able to get the ball into P.J. or maybe get something going with Bre uh, Brevin Galloway. This is Galloway, slides it over to Hall. Good team defense played by Wake Force. No damage done. They still lead by 11. You saw even on that time, you know, they're building a wall around P.J. Hall. Every time he gets anywhere near the room, uh, rim, they're sending multiple defenders to challenge him right at the rim. Carr just waiting for that pass, able to set up his defender. Bradford is fouled, and he'll go back to the free throw line. Nice pass by Carr, but I thought that once he touched the paint, that was one of those I thought he should have let go. Pretty much had sold the pump fake. Watch this pump fake right here. He, right there, wide open. I thought he could have taken that shot, but again, saw Bradford down there and thought he was wide open. With the way Carr shoots the ball, I would have liked him to shoot the ball on the catch. I'm sure Steve Forbes is think, think, thinking the same thing. That last foul was on Ian Shefflin. He now has three. Bradford, the transfer from Kansas State. It's amazing how much the roster has changed from last year to this year. But Steve Forbes still has his Demon Deacons playing his brand of ball middle of the season. Tough. That grind on you. And they have some pretty good offense. Wiggins. Size advantage. Hall. And this is where they miss Hunter Tyson all night long. Cam Hildreth has basically stayed right in his back pocket with the blow by Cameron Hildreth. And again, with Hildreth, if you allow him to get going, Tyson was back and backpedaling, and he basically just went, went right by him to the cup. Shefflin, offensive foul. Fourth foul on Shefflin. We talked about Cam Hildreth. Watch how he gets downhill on him. Realizes that he's got Tyson back. back. Give him a little bit of a hezzy. Being able to say, okay, you know what? See you later, partner. I'm going to go ahead and give you these deuces. Well, it's never a good sign if you're Clemson and you're replacing one guy with four fouls with another guy with four fouls. But that's what they're doing. Ian Shefflin goes to the bench with the four fouls. Josh Beadle comes back in playing with four fouls. Wilson. Hildreth runs down the rebound. And those are the 50-50 plays that Steve Ford preaches his team. Give you another opportunity. Wake's done a better job of taking care of the ball this half. Only one turnover. Clemson already with seven. Oh, that was a tough chance for Hildreth. Almost hit the step back three. All right, can Clemson figure out some offense? Their last basket came at the 9.34 mark. So it's been over three minutes. And a reach-in foul. One of the reasons that Clemson has not really been able to get anything inside the lane. You see that foul trouble right there. Josh Beadle, Hunter, Shefflin, Galloway. That's a lot of guys when you got a short bench. And no Chase Hunter because of injury. No Al oh, Alex Hemingway because of injury. One and one. And no, wave it off before the shot. Oh! P.J. Hall got into the paint and wiped it away. It's got to be a hard one for Brad Barnell as you try to climb back into this game. You see right there, P.J. Hall caught with his toe right in the pool. Under six to play. Wake trying to avenge a loss at Clemson in December. Hildreth. Tyson's got himself another double-double. Tenth double-double this season for Tyson. There's Tyson on the offensive end. Ooh, shot because Tyson penetrated. You saw Wake again. We talked about that wall that they're building down there, being able to get some separation. Smooth stroke. That stops a 7-0 run for Wake Forest. 
Time is on the side of the Demon Deeks. Williamson. Bradford. Oh, good block. Mean block. Hall took it from him. Comes in the other way. And Galloway blocked by Carr. What a recovery block by Andrew Carr. More rejections in the Harvard Law School. <laughs> <laughs> Wake Forest leads by 11. Hildred! That would have been the kill shot. Four and a half remaining. Clemson, Beadle is fouled and will have two free throws. Brian Aller, let's take a look at tonight's Protecting the Paint, brought to you by CPI Security. We talked about the block party on both ends. You see P.J. Hall coming over on the weak side to block that by Bradford, and then what looks like an easy one, you see Andrew Carr swatting that away. Both teams participate in this block party. It's your CPI Security protecting the paint, partner. Only bit of bad news in a long while for Wake Forest just happened. That foul on Cameron Hildreth is his fourth. Such a solid all-around player. Hildreth will have to leave here with 425 remaining in our ball game. He'll be protected. Back into the ball game comes Matthew Marsh and Damari Monsanto. And now with Hildreth on the bench, interesting to see if that frees up Hunter Tyson because most of his struggles has been Hildreth being able to fight through those screens, not giving him easy looks. Interesting to see during this time. How long does Steve Forbes keep him on the bench, especially if Tyson can get rolling? Beetle makes a couple of free throws. Remember, Beetle was denied because of the lane violation just a moment ago. Another what if for Clemson. Appleby, so quick. Oh my goodness, he got knocked to the floor. This is trouble on multiple levels for Clemson. It's going to be three free throws for Appleby, and Beetle has just fouled out. When you saw how he froze Beetle on the fake. And again, trying to challenge that, that's one of the, that's a huge loss for Clemson, especially with Beetle. Watch this replay. Basically comes out, fakes him there, goes up, and then Beetle challenge, and yeah, that's contact. Beetle, he, Beetle didn't agree with it, but you watch. That last time, up in the air. That kicks that leg out, you know. You'd have to go a long time to convince me that there have been better point guards or quicker point guards in the ACC over the years than what Wake Forest has produced. Tyree Appleby, the latest in the long line of greats. Bogues, T, Ish, Chris Paul, Childress. What do you want? Keep going. Appleby misses the first. Came into this game shooting 83% at the line. Been kind of an adventure today. Four for six. Mm. Oh my goodness. Four for seven at the line for Appleby. Leaving a lot of meat on the bone here. And you see Beto over there. It was like, ball don't lie. I've never seen anyone go 0 for 3 after getting fouled shooting three. Never. In any level of basketball. This doesn't happen. <laughs> One out of three is Appleby. Have you seen anyone miss three straight free throws after being fouled shooting three? Yes. Wow. Okay. Tyson. One and done. Clemson running out of time. And this is where Steve Forbes talks about that last four minutes of the game. You're up 10. The clock is your friend. Execution is key. You realize you run your plays, and then what you do is you take advantage of the mismatch and try to touch the paint. Here are the last few moments of the game, and there are two. two oh. Clemson and mishaps happen. And what you found is Appleby had two guys on him. They were so so worried about him in the penetration. You find Marsh wide open. That's how you shoot 89% if you're Matthew Marsh. He's attempted <laughs> one shot so far today in 16 minutes. And it's from two feet out, and he finishes with two hands. You see right now, double team. And he said, get it down to Marsh. Marsh is saying, you know what? I would gladly take this right now. Wait, open it up by 12. A school record. They lead Clemson by 12. Take a look at the upcoming schedule for Clemson, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. You see that Virginia Tech game. Virginia Tech been playing up 
up and down basketball. Hunter Couture scheduled to come back. He's been big for them. And then they go down. And they've got Georgia Tech on Tuesday. And you look at weight. They can go ahead and win this one. Be a huge win. And they welcome the Tar Heels here on Saturday. And how about that matchup next Wednesday against Pitt? I like Clemson's got the basketball. Do they have one less kick? They're playing without Josh Beadle, who's fouled out. Playing without Chase Hunter, who didn't dress with an ankle. And Alex Hemingway, who is out right now, playing a Freshitis. Tyson. That's a big shot. The rotation. Guy. The rotation. P.J. Hall saw the double team came, did not force it, got the ball out of his hands. A good rotation over to Hunter Tyson. There's a guy in the front row wearing a robe trying to jaw with Hunter Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't have much teeth to that bark. Clemson, they've got it back. Galloway! Long rebound, Tyson. Hall pushed from behind by Marsh. Because of the bonus, this will be a one-on-one -on -one situation for Hall. I like the fact that, that Clemson did give him another touch for the last time you see. Watch how low he has Marsh sealed down there. Marsh with a two-hand push in the back. Opportunity for B.J. Hall to cut this lead down to seven. Marsh has four fouls, so he is on the verge of expulsion. One and one. And Marsh is slowly walking back to the bench. He's going to be lifted. Davion Bradford comes back in. Possible strategy for Clemson. Remember, Bradford is not elite as a free throw shooter. Well, and here's the thing. If I'm Brad Barnell, I would entertain fouling Bradford. I mean, but who, who can you foul? This? <laughs> you know, everybody left to foul. All right. <laughs> He's already had one guy foul out. Now Brad Barnell will figure it out. Smarter than most. You see Clemson extend into a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Skip pass. Appleby's got it. And a foul. One of the freshmen being forced to play big minutes, R.J. Godfrey. And Brian, you look at the guys on the floor. And Clemson, a team that is 15-3, ranked 19th in the country. Two true freshmen playing here with two minutes remaining. R.J. Godfrey, Chauncey Wiggins. Trying to figure it out on the fly as young players. Absolutely, and in this in this league, you've got to have solid point guard play, and not having Chase Hunter has really hurt them. Not so much for his scoring, but how he's been able to run this team. Appleby, clearly frustrated with himself, has not had a great night at the free throw line. But he does have 20 points next to his name. And here's the thing, too, when you talk about Wake. This Wake team is a good ball club. They beat this Duke team here. And then again, you're talking five and two in the conference. Obviously, when they played up at Clemson, that was a game that they should have won. They were actually up playing against Carolina. So you talk about the two losses in conference play comes to two really good teams on the road. Still going inside. This is Hall. This nice left follow. Tyson. And a foul. What a big play by Hunter Tyson. You see Hunter Tyson getting, being able to get by a Cam Hildreth. He goes up. You see that? Again? Nice little play, and then Hunter Tyson comes out. No one puts a body on him. Being able to flush and get the one and the foul. That is a big time play. For that to happen with 207 remaining. Man. Third foul on Andrew Carr. This is the closest that Clemson has been in a while. Now you're talking a two-possession game right now. If you're Clemson, you want to play solid. See that one, three, one. He'll just back into the game for stability reasons. He's got four fouls. Again, if you're awake, you want to try to get into the teeth of that, that zone. Try to pick and pop. Williamson. Hildreth. Big bomb. Big, big bomb. Again, good penetration by Williamson. Forced the help. Allowed Hildreth to have a wide open three. Tyson's been the man lately. Short and a foul on Bradford. Didn't need to do it. He hip checks Hall to the ground. Watch this last play and you see 
Devion Williams to penetrate, forced to help, being able to get Cam Hill wide open, being able to tee it up. Knock down that three. You can win a lot of ball games with guys like Cameron Hildreth. He knows what he's doing. Bradford called for the foul. Now double bonus situation for Clemson. Two free throws for Hall. He's a perfect five for five at the strike tonight. He may never miss again. That's a good looking free throw. He's had a solid night tonight. He's 18 points, eight rebounds. Still keeping Clemson within striking distance. Shoots a pretty ball. Wake Forest can make another change. Bradford's going to be lifted. Monsanto back in. Appleby, Hildreth, Monsanto, Williamson, and Carr playing for Wake Forest. You're looking basically, Wake's clock is your friend. A little more over in a minute, three possession game. Last thing you get forward is a turnover. You'll feel like you got to penetrate the teeth and for a nice little kick out. Appleby, extra pass, Monsanto. Hildreth, what's new? Runs down a loose ball. And we're under a minute to play. Appleby is fouled. Wiggins commits the foul. Two free throws for Appleby. Wake Forest leading the rebounding war by just two. But the most important rebound of the game probably just happened a moment ago when Hildreth ran down that loose ball in the corner. Absolutely. They gave them a free opportunity with 19 seconds left to go. You take a little more time, and then you get it into your playmaker's hands. Appleby had a spurt in that middle of the game where he couldn't hit the free throw, but he's hitting the big ones now. Absolutely. Galloway. Knocked away by Williamson. Clemson running out of time. If you're Clemson, you need a quick score. You want to go ahead and stretch this game out. You need a quick score. Obviously, you'll look for a three, but I'd take a quick basket and try to play the foul game. Wiggins. Hildreth. The rebound. And just willing the foul. Hunter Tyson was wailing at him. And Hildreth will march the other direction and fire up a couple of free throws. The Clemson Tigers have... Looked into the future and see an L coming. They're down nine with a very good free throw shooter shooting a pair at the line for Wake Forest. You see Hildreth with 15, possibly 16 points, nine rebounds. But I want to say it was the defense that he played on Hunter Tyson. Not allowing him to be able to have much breathing room, fighting over those picks, and make it a challenging night for him. They really paid the, played the dividends. Mm. Oh, with a hammer. And before that ball even went through the rim, a timeout call by Brad Brownell. He saw what was happening and said, I want a timeout immediately. It's now a nine-point game. See penetration by Galloway getting the ball over. Nice powerful finish at the rim by DJ Hall. I'm going to the way back machine, but a guy used to dunk like that, cocking it all the way back and touching his nameplate, Larry Nance. Oh wow, yeah, he vintage, did go way back. Vintage Clemson from about 40 years ago. And Larry Nance with Sky Man every single time with two hands, he would always touch his nameplate and then finish. And those pull-ups at the rim. Long socks too. Teaching moment for Brad Brownell. How about this for a fact, though? You can remember this one. Brad Brownell has never been a conference coach of the year. I said, what? He was coach of the year when he was at UNC Williamson to play, and they, they play in the Columbia Athletic Association, technically not a conference. He was coach of the year at Wright State, but they play in the Horizon League. It's a league, technically not a conference. So if he wins Coach of the Year in the ACC this year, it'll be the first time he's been Conference Coach of the Year. You know what? That's surprising for me because I thought maybe uh, six to eight years ago, I thought they had a really good stretch 
where he's never been ACC coach of the year. Oh, yeah. I'm going to trust you. You are. Now in his 13th year. You're always dropping jewels. I'm going to go ahead and give you that benefit of the doubt. And a foul in the backcourt. Appleby wasn't going to give it up. Once, two more free throws. Third foul on Hunter Tyson. How about this Wade team? You know, four guys in double figures. So Appleby closing in. Huge night. Monsanto with a huge night, 17 points. Andrew Carr with 16. D.C. Notre Dame, 2 o'clock on Saturday. Wake Forest came into this game leading the conference during conference play, points per game, and that's going to go up. They have 85 points as we play our final 30 seconds. About the stat line for Tyree Appleby, 23 points, 7 dimes, and 5 steals. Hildreth with another steal. How about an exclamation point? No. If you call the cherry on the top. Steve Forbes has slain his personal dragon. For the first time, Steve Forbes has defeated the Clemson Tigers after losing the first three times against Brad Brownell's bunch. How about this Wake Forest team? They refuse to lose at home. They are now 10 and 0 here at Joel Coliseum. First time in the long, rich history of Wake Forest basketball that the Demon Deacons have started back-to-back -back seasons perfect through 10 games at home. And they set the tone from the beginning of the game. I thought they came and established their offense, limited.